Hey everybody, Adam here. Hope everyone is doing well. So long story short, a couple of years ago, my wife and I found a bunch of abandoned trailers that somebody dumped way out there in the middle of the valley. And they were all full of junk, but there was this one that had a whole bunch of antique windows and doors in it. And my wife said, we should take these and do like a cool art project or something with them. Of course I said, okay, that's a good idea. Flash forward about a year later, after many, many unsuccessful attempts at trying to grow plants outdoors, I thought to myself, maybe I could turn those windows into a greenhouse. And so that's what I did, and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. Okay, so here's the greenhouse, uh, front of it. Hey, watch out, little man. Sorry, my dog's always trying to trip me. I think he wants to break my neck. Um, yeah, so you can see Here's one of the doors that I was talking about. I'll show you the other one in a second. I had to replace, this was actually a screen door and I put some windows on it. Windows got blown out in a windstorm, so I had to replace it with plexiglass. Had to do the same thing with the other door. Here are the windows. I'm not exactly sure how old they are, but I can tell they're very old. It wouldn't surprise me if they're older than me or even a lot older than me the um, trailer that I found them in was probably from the 1960s it had aluminum siding and it was kind of like an Airstream knockoff so it's a really old trailer and these are just really old-fashioned windows wood frames like all wood single pane glass it's not tempered you can see the locks on them are really old-fashioned I don't think you see those much anymore these days. And obviously, the paint is really weathered. But they're still functional. All of the wood on this side of the building, all this wood that's been painted white, this was all pallet wood and just scrap boards left over from other projects. So, like all of these small little one-inch boards, they're really more like three quarters of an inch. Those are all from pallets that my wife and I broke down and they were just really junky beat up pallets that had no other good use other than being cut down into small pieces and used for something like this. And then all of the, the two buys, these are just scraps of wood I have left over from building our tiny house, building fences, stuff like that. Again, no real good use for them other than what I've done with them. Got some old cabinet doors too that we found in those trailers. Over here, uh, my wife's coworker gave her like a hundred something of these blue beer bottles. I guess her husband drinks a lot of this kind of beer exclusively and she didn't know what to do with them. My wife really likes blue glass, so she took them. Uh, I was gonna do these kind of bottle windows all over the whole building but honestly they were so time consuming to make it it really wasn't worth it um, i only have cordless power tools so making just two of these holes with my jigsaw would completely drain the battery have to wait all day for it to charge again so it just kind of became a chore that wasn't worth it and honestly because they're dark blue glass they don't let much light in the building they're really just a decoration around over here here is the back of the building this is just scrap metal that we found just old sheets of corrugated steel probably from somebody's old roof or something that got torn apart we just uh, banged out some of the dents slapped a coat or two of white paint on it and that's it over here, I've got a 275-gallon IBC tote uh, hooked up to a gutter, collects rainwater. I've got about a little less than 250 gallons in there right now. I built this shade box around it to block the sun off of it to uh, hopefully prevent algae from growing in the tank. These kind of tanks, if you don't cover them or paint them, algae will grow 
pretty quickly inside of them because they're quite translucent. And yeah, I just built this out of, I actually built most of this out of scrap boards I had left over from the concrete slab I just built for our new house. If you haven't seen that video, check that out. I uploaded it right before this one. And something I like about having this box around it as opposed to painting the tank, which is kind of a pain because you have to take the cage, if you want to do a good job and do it right, you got to take the cage off, put a couple coats of paint on, then put the cage back together. But once it's painted, you can't see what's in it, so it's hard to tell how much water you have. But here I can just sort of look in through this corner over here and I can, I can get a pretty good idea of how much water is in there. Over on this face of the building, we've got another antique door. Again, original window broke. That whole door actually got blown off in a windstorm and it broke the glass. So I had to reinforce it and replace the glass with plexiglass. Uh, more scrap boards and pallet wood. These are actually like really, really old pieces of wood I just found out in the valley. So yeah, now I'll go ahead and I'll take you inside of the building, show you what that looks like. Something that's kind of funny to me and probably worth mentioning, I don't think you can tell on camera, but all of these windows and doors were just really crooked. I'd, I'd measure at the top and then I'd measure in the middle and then I'd measure at the bottom and I'd get three different measurements every single time. So I just kind of had to average it out to whatever, you know, seemed like the best fit. But uh, Whenever I step in this place and walk around inside of it, I feel like I'm in Pee Wee's Playhouse. Everything's so slanted and crooked. Yeah, here we are inside of the greenhouse. Um, so far, all I've really grown in here are a lot of herbs. I've got a bunch of mint going over here and uh, some more and some basil over there. I'm just getting started with the Kratky method. That's non-circulating hydroponics. I'll make more videos about it in the future. I don't need to go into all the details, but um, you basically just put your plants in a container of water and plant food and just let it do its thing. I've got, well, I'm starting to get my other containers going here. I've made one right here. We've got a few more to go. I'll be growing green leaf vegetables in these, so lettuce, spinach, kale, etc. And it's a pretty simple concept. You just put your seedling in one of these net cups, pop it in there, fill the container with water and plant food, and then you just wait a month or two and harvest the crops. At least it's supposed to be that easy. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty bad at growing stuff. So if I can't get this right, then I don't think there's any hope for me. I'm also using this as my tool shed, at least for now. Um, it's a lot better than leaving my tools underneath our side porch like I used to. The floor is just like a really crude stone and mortar floor that I made. I just filled in the area with fist-sized rocks and gravel, and then I just poured a bunch of dry mortar mix, like the quick mix stuff, over the top, spread it out, and just sprayed it down with water using that pump sprayer. So this is just a utility building, so I wasn't gonna spend a bunch of time or money doing a fancy floor, especially, you know, we're gonna spill water on it and it's gonna get dirty and stuff, so what's the point? Over here along this wall, I was going to put, my original idea was like I was going to put a couple big mirrors, but then I realized for way less money, I could cover way more square footage with corrugated steel and get the same effect. Mirrors are really expensive, and this stuff is almost just as reflective. I mean, it's so reflective that if the sun hits it directly, it's blinding. So it actually does a really good job of just spreading the light around in here. Also used the same kind of corrugated steel for the roof. And this roof assembly is just some random thing that I came up with, <laughs> but it works. Uh, I was a little nervous about it at first. It's, it's quite light 
in terms of framing, but I, you know, ran the numbers and did the math and everything said it should work fine. So I went ahead and went with it and it did. Um, as you could see, you saw in the thumbnail photo, this is actually held quite a number of snow loads and uh, it hasn't caved in on us yet. So I think it's fine. Sealed up the edges with spray foam. Also a little detail I forgot to show you. Pop back outside for a quick second. I didn't want to do overhangs over here because um, I don't want to cast shade on the building. I want light to come in. So instead I just put a drip edge on both sides. Hopefully you can see that just to help kind of shed some of the water away from the building. One over there and one over on this side to help you know, shed water into that gutter. Pop back in for a second. Most of the framing in here, especially all along this wall, where there is no glass. It's just standard two by four, 16 on center framing, nothing fancy at all. Uh, all the rest of the walls, it's just random. I just sort of arbitrarily laid out the windows on the ground in a pattern, framed around them, then put the frames up and put the walls in. So yeah, no real like method or, it looks kind of like complex when you look at it, like uh, as if like I put a bunch of thought into it, but honestly I didn't, it's just random. Trying to think of what other important details I could share here. Oh, well, I forgot to talk about <laughs> what this building is. So this is a passive solar greenhouse. And for those of you who don't know what that means, it means it's a really simple concept. The building faces southeast almost perfectly because in the middle of winter, that's where the sun rises. So you can see in this a crevice right there that's exactly where the sun rises in the winter so what happens is the coldest time of day is right before the sun comes up so when it's the absolute coldest as soon as the sun comes up direct light starts coming in here and heating up the building and that happens throughout the whole course of the day because the sun is quite low in the winter it just sort of goes like that around you know across the sky so for most of the day in the winter there's direct sunlight pouring in here heating up the building, hitting the plants. In the summer, we're gonna have kind of an opposite thing going on that I, that I hope is beneficial. Most of the day, the sunlight's gonna be directly overhead. We're not gonna get a lot of direct light through the windows, but that should be a good thing because in the summer where we live, the sun is so intense, if your plants are in direct sunlight, it'll kill them. It, it just cooks them to death. I've also already learned that when I started these mint plants, it seemed intuitive to put them in front of the glass so they would get the most sunlight. They started to wilt within an hour. They were just, the sun was so intense, they just started getting cooked. So that's why I had to move them all back. And we'll see what happens when I start doing, you know, the other vegetables, the lettuce and so forth down, you know, that I might have to move them away from those windows. Uh, we'll just have to find out. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything. I'll be doing, I'm sure over the years, I'll be doing a lot more videos in here, uh, especially once I have more things growing. I'm sorry that there's not a lot growing in here. I know that's not super exciting. There are some minor little things I need to touch up. So like I need to get some screens or something up there, not really for insects, but to keep birds from coming through there. Thrashers and sparrows, they'll, they'll fly in through those wide openings and then they can't figure out how to get out. I've got to open both of the doors up, try to shoo them out of here. It's a big pain in the wazoo. So I got to figure out something with that. And just some other little things, just caulking around places. We put greenhouse, before we put the siding up on the outside, we put a lot of greenhouse plastic around the building to kind of help again with, just give it some more insulation and also help with keeping bugs out of here though. So far bugs haven't been a big issue, but. We'll see, I mean, once there's a lot of vegetables growing in here, they could become a problem. So thus, <laughs> the, 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 so thus uh, concludes the tour of the greenhouse. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope everyone found it interesting. 
Again, I'm sure in the years to come, I'll be making a lot more videos in here. So if you want to see more, please subscribe. And also check out my build series. I'm building a new house out here. I've got two parts up so far. The third part will probably be coming out in another month or two. Yeah, I'll see everyone in the next video. Take care.